Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community, and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open. And be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. This morning, our text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 9, and this is what it says. From Paul, God called me to be an apostle of Christ Jesus because that is what God wanted. Also from Sosthenes, our brother in Christ, to the church of God in Corinth, to you who have been made holy in Christ Jesus. You were, made, you were called to be God's holy people with all people everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of the grace God has given you in Christ Jesus. I thank God because in Christ you have been made rich in every way. In all your speaking and all your knowledge, just as our witness about Christ has been guaranteed to you, so... You have every gift from God while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to come again. Jesus will keep you strong until the end so that there will be no wrong in you. On the day the Lord Jesus Christ comes again, God, who has called you to share everything with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. Pray with me. Jesus, you are faithful. You're faithful to be here this day, this time, not because of our goodness, but because of yours. Your chosen residence, it's, it's us. Lord, live and breathe through us this day. It's in Christ, Christ's name we pray. Amen. There's an old story about four brothers who went to college graduated from college, all became very successful doctors, lawyers, and businessmen. After their mother was getting on up in age, they decided that for her birthday, they would, they would all get her something extra special. They got together, and one of the brothers said, you know, mom's been living in that little house for so long, I decided that I would have her build a big new house. And the other brother said, wow, that's very generous. Second brother said, well, you know, I, she... Um, I decided in that big new house, I would have a, a, a home theater built. I spent $100,000 on a 50-seat theater. It has Dolby surround sound, and the thing is great. She can have her friends over to the house anytime. They can watch movies together, and it's, it's fantastic. Well, the brothers all agreed that that was really a, a nice gift. Third brother said, you know, mom has been nursing that old car for so long. I decided, I went to the Mercedes dealer and I had her sent a brand new Mercedes SL AMG. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. I, it's convertible. I think she'll love it. The last son said, well, you know, mom's not 
not, not seeing too well these days. And I, you know, we all know how much she loved to read the Bible. I was talking to a preacher who said that there was this parrot that it took 12 preachers 20 years to train this parrot to read the entire Bible. And I had to pledge $100,000 a year to the church in, in order to, to get this parrot. But the, I had her sent this, this parrot that all she has to do is name the chapter and the verse, and this parrot will recite anywhere in the Bible whenever mom says the, the chapter and the verse. And they all agreed that was a really great gift. Well, mom's birthday came, and after her birthday each of her sons received a thank you letter. The first one, well, it was to Milton. It said, Milton, thank you so much for the big new house. I really only live in one room, and it means that I have a lot more house to clean than I've ever had before. But thank you for the gift anyway. Then to, to her second son, Melvin, she said, Dear Melvin, thank you so much for the home theater it seats 50 people, and it's huge. All my friends are dead now, and I can't really see very well, um, but thank you anyway. Then to her third son, Michael, she said, Michael, thank you so much for, for the car. I really don't drive it at all nowadays. It just sits in the driveway. I have my groceries delivered, and I really have no need of it, but thank you for the gift. And then to her her last son, Marvin, she said, Marvin, thank you so much for the gift. Finally, a useful gift, something that I can use. I appreciate it so much. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> well, there's a difference between being given a gift and putting that gift to proper use. There's a big difference between being made rich and putting those riches to proper use. Paul starts off his letter right here, and he says it's not just to the people in Corinth, that it's to people everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. This letter is to you and to me. And he's saying that in this letter, verse 5, Christ has made you rich. You have been made rich in every way. Not just in some ways or in one or two ways. You've been made rich in every way. In verse 7 he says that you have received every gift. Not just some of the gifts. You've received every gift. And finally in verse 8 he says because Jesus will keep you strong. That's the heart of it. That's the meat of it. That's the, the purpose of the, the, the gift. Of the riches. That you'll be transformed. You'll be made strong in Christ Jesus that we won't limp along through this life. That it's not just Christ Jesus for the hereafter. That he says it's, it's un, until the day our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. That the strength of Jesus Christ begins to, to live in us now. That that's, that that's the gift of God. That's the riches that you and I have been given. And there's this thread that goes from the beginning of 1 Corinthians all the way to the end. I say thread. Really, it's more like a rope. Again and again and again and again. The Apostle Paul talks about what you've been given. He talks about what that you've received. He talks about what you and I, the gifts that, that Jesus has for us. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That, that we've been made rich that we've been made rich. And the first thing that Paul says is we've been made rich in his spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12, Paul says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. We've re not received the, the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. It's his Holy Spirit that he's given to you and me, not just to to some of us, but all who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been made rich. We've been made rich. Tony Campolo tells a story about a preacher friend of his that was trying to, to get the leaders in his church to rely on God's Spirit. And to follow the, the urgings, the leadings of the Spirit. And he was having a little trouble with one of his deacons trying to depend and follow on the Spirit. But this, the deacon said, well, you know, the only thing that I've felt led to do was is that I felt that once a month that I ought to take a group of people to the, to the nursing home. 
Now, God didn't lead me to do the speaking, and God certainly didn't lead me to do the, the singing. But I, 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 the only thing I can figure is that, that God's trying to lead me to, to take a group of people for a worship service at the, at the nursing home. Well, the preacher said, well, go with it. Go with it if that's what you feel God's calling you to do. So the first month, he went there, and uh, the people gathered for the worship service. He went and he stood in the back of the room and this old fellow came up in a wheelchair and grabbed his hand and held his hand during the whole service. And then at the end of the service, he just wheeled away. The next month they came back and the deacon went and stood at the back of the room. Same old fellow came up in a wheelchair, didn't say much of anything, just held his hand. And at the end of the month, after month, after month, every month when, when he took the people there, this same old fellow would, in a wheelchair would come and hold his hand. Then they went, and, and the fellow wasn't there. So the deacon turned to one of the nurses and said, you know, every month that I've come, there's been this old fellow in a wheelchair that has come and held my hand at the back of the, the room. The nurse said, uh, he's, he's not doing very well. His daughter's here, and he's in his last days, but if you'd like to see him, he's at the end of the hall. Now, be warned, he's got tubes, and he's not conscious, and... Um, it might be kind of shocking to you, but he's at the end of the hall, and his daughter's back there. You can, you can visit with him if you'd like. Well, the deacon went to the end of the hall, and he knocked. Nobody said anything, so he went into the room, and there was no one else in there other than the old man. Well, he wasn't conscious, and the nurse was right. There were tubes going everywhere, but he reached out, and he held his hand. He prayed with him. And at the end of the prayer, he squeezed the old man's hand, and the old man squeezed back. Well, he began to cloud up a little bit, and his, he got a little misty-eyed. And as he began to leave, that's when the woman came into the room. It was his daughter, and she said, I'm so glad you're here. The deacon said, what? She said, yes. He said, he's been waiting for you. He said he didn't want to die until Jesus came. I told him that, that once he died, that he would be able to walk with Jesus in heaven and hold on Jesus' hand as he walked with him in heaven. And that's when he said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't want to leave until I have a chance to hold the hand of Jesus once more. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. It's a gift. It's His riches. And by God, He's living through you. You are His hands. You are His feet. Be transformed by His Holy Spirit and go into a world that needs to know who Jesus is because He's alive in you. You've received his riches. You've received the gifts. You've been made strong by Jesus Christ. But we know there's a difference between being given a gift and putting it to proper use. Let Jesus use you. Let Jesus use you. You've been made rich made rich in his spirit. And the second thing that I want to talk about this morning is you may have been made rich in his love. Now, whenever a preacher mentions love, everybody kind of leans in a little bit. Nobody doesn't like to hear a preacher talk about love. And I think a big part of the reason is, is it doesn't make any difference if we're five years old or 105 years old. Everybody kind of has an idea about what love is, that it's a feeling. It's feeling. But if, if we follow too far down that road, you know, we're headed in the wrong direction. I heard somebody say that love is that feeling you feel when you feel something you've never felt before. Well, that's part of it, but that's not what, what the Bible's talking about, a feeling, a feeling, a feeling that comes and, and goes. I remember when I was five years old, my mother was having a family devotion. My brother and sister and I, we were sitting on the bed, and she said, 
Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I was five years old, so I took that pretty literally, and I knew who lived next door to me. It was Kelly Frazier. She was two years older. She was about a foot taller, and she was twice as strong as I was. So I blurted out in panicky voice. I said, I can't kiss Kelly Frazier. She'll beat me up. <laughs> My mother was confused. She said, Tom, what are you talking about? You, and I said, you said, Jesus said, love your neighbor. That's Kelly Frazier. And if I kiss Kelly Frazier, she's going to beat me up. She, <laughs> Mom said, calm down. That's not what he's talking about here. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he's talking about doing what's best for them and not just what's best for you. Well, the way the Apostle Paul put it, in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, love is patient. Do you always feel patient? I don't know anybody who always feels patient. But that's what Paul says, love is patient. And then he says, love is kind. Do you always feel kind? I don't know anybody who always feels kind. But that's what Paul says love is. Love is not jealous. It does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. In other words, love doesn't make lists. It says, yes, but you didn't, but the things that I did and, and you didn't do and you should have done, and it, it, it doesn't make lists. Well, that, that's not natural at all. One of the most natural things in the world is to, to make lists for those who, who deserve for, for us to love them back and those that don't deserve for us to love them back. But Paul doesn't stop there with that. It doesn't take into account wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, is what Paul says right here in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love never fails. Feelings fail, not sometimes, 100% of the time. The riches that, that God has, has given to you and to me, to all who, who, who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the riches that he've, He's given to us is, is a love that's not in our strength, that's not in our feelings. It's a gift that's been given to us through the risen Christ, that has strength that we don't have. Where Paul says, Jesus will keep you strong, it means that Jesus will keep you strong in love when you're not strong. When you default to your feelings, feelings that fail, Jesus has strength that we don't have. Not just to, to love those who are lovable, not just to love those who are lovely, not just to love those who are likable, but to love even those that have hurt you, those who don't deserve it, those who you'd love to cross off the list. Well, those are riches that don't come from feelings. They come through the risen Christ. And those riches are given to you and to me. It's a gift. And we know, we know, there's a difference between being given a gift and putting that gift to proper use. You've been made rich. You've been made rich in His Spirit. You've been made rich in His love. But the last thing that I want to talk about this morning, that, that, that rope, that thread of, of what you've received in Jesus Christ, you've received the riches of His gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. This is next to the last chapter in, in, in the book. And this is what Paul says. He says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which I also received, in which you stand, by which you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, in other words, I gave to you, I delivered to you, as of first importance that which I also received, 
Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scripture. That is the gospel. That is the good news that, that you and I have received. It's news of, of a, the, the, Jesus came to usher in a new creation. He came to usher in a new kingdom. He came to usher in a new beginning, that it's news. And we can either be transformed by that news or act like the news didn't happen. The way C.S. Lewis put it, he says that the good news consists of, of one great doctrine and, and one great fact. And that great doctrine, that first great doctrine is the doctrine of redemption. That on the cross, that Jesus did what we couldn't do. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He became sin on our behalf that we might be made right with God. He became sin. He took all those things that would destroy us, all those things that would defeat us, all those things that would conquer us, and he, he killed them. The sin, the death, the hardship, the heartache. He nailed them to the cross to defeat them once and for all, but he didn't stop there. The one great fact is, is resurrection, that Jesus rose from the grave, that you and I might receive that power through His Holy Spirit and be transformed by it, that we would know how to put to use the good news. I read a story from Sonderstrom Air Force Base in Greenland. This Air Force Base is one of the coldest Air Force Bases on Earth. It's not the coldest, but it's one of the coldest. Very harsh climate, and usually the folks that are stationed there, they'd rather not be stationed there. Well, the story that, that came was from an air disaster that happened at Sonderstrom Air Force Base. Twenty-two people were killed. There was only one chaplain there on the base, and the duty was given to the chaplain with the aid of a, of a lieutenant who was also the mortuary officer to collect the bodies of those 22 that died in the, the disaster and to meet with those who knew the 22 and to help lead them through the, the tragedy. That they were to gather volunteers to help collect those, the bodies. Well, they started early one morning the weather was very cold and very bitter. They finished later on that night. All the volunteers began to make their way back to their room except for one. And it was that young lieutenant that was the mortuary officer. Instead of going back to his room, he went to the chaplain's room. He knocked on the door, and when the chaplain answered the door, tears began to fill the, the young lieutenant's eyes. And that's when he turned to the chaplain and he said, as we were picking up the bodies today, I realized something. I realized that the only other people out there with us were the people who go to church here. I've always been an unbeliever. And I used to ridicule the same people who were out there with us. Yet they are the only people who would or perhaps could do what we had to do today. It must have been their Christian spirit that could help them see beyond the horror to the hope, to see, to see the, the kingdom that's all around us, that's been breathed in, ushered in by Jesus Christ, to see the new creation that's all around us. And it's a creation that gives hope even in the face of death. It's a creation, a gospel that gives hope even when it it looks like defeat. In the midst of hardship, that we're transformed, transformed into to what we can't do on our own, that Jesus is the one that keeps us strong. And that's the good news. That's the riches of His gospel. You have been given those riches. And this morning... I want to invite you to receive those, gifts, those riches, to put them to use, 
in your life here this day. We can't do that on our own. It's his riches. It's his strength. It's his Holy Spirit that lives through us. That we might live in a a different way. A transformed way. Where his life lives through us. This morning it may be that um, what you feel is defeated. What you feel is hardship. What you feel is maybe it's the pain of another or maybe it's the pain of having fallen short yourself. Know that Jesus rose from the grave To give us strength to to you and me that's stronger than that pain, stronger than that defeat, stronger than anything that's natural here on this earth. It's the spirit of the risen Christ. And I want to pray with you this morning that you received those riches, that you received that gift. Pray with me. Jesus, your riches, your, your gifts, they're the strength of Jesus living through us. Not just in the hereafter, but in the here and now. And I do believe this morning that there are those that they want to do good. They want to do right. They want to do better. But their strength is it's not enough. This morning, I do believe that they're, they're calling on your strength. May they know your riches. May we all know your riches. All who call on your name this day. May we know your strength alive in us. And that we're to be transformed. Here as we meet in worship, give us those ears that hear and those eyes that see. Hope. See your hand. See your, your good news, your, your new beginnings this day. And then we know the, not only the riches of your love, but we're able to reach out with those riches to a world that needs to know who you are. And we become those hands and those feet, transformed by your Holy Spirit. We pray this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you wanna see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We wanna be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace, amen.